today is a day of many firsts. We're making a braised short rib ragu in a Korean stone pot. There's gonna be a lot of inspiration from my Italian cooking background, my Korean eating background. I'm gonna add vegetables from upstate New York. Look at this asparagus. Tomato products from Sicily, pasta from Sicily, meats are from Sullivan Street. What is a Newport steak? Somewhere between the nose and the tail. Nice. Well, it's so good. Hey guys, what's up? How's it going? Good, good, man. It's good to see you. You have beef short ribs, right? Of can you? We got <laughs> can you cut them for me into like you know two inch chunks? No problem. We got the best butcher, my cousin Sal. All right, all right, all right. Sal's got it. Yeah, show me how big. Can we maybe go almost like bite sized? Okay. So I'm cooking them in a little pot, like a okay. little stone pot. So you want to do what pieces like that? Yeah, perfect. That's perfect. Yeah. What are you making? Well, I'm gonna braise short ribs and I'm gonna cook them in like a stone pot in this like wood burning, gas burning oven. Do you cook or no? My wife cooks. Your own What's your favorite thing she makes? Oh, yeah. And I'm not like anything your wife makes. I mean, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have kids or no? Yeah, I have two kids. My six year old tells everybody she's gonna be a butcher one day. No way. Oh man. That I must feel don't nice. Do it. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> my son's the same. I'm like, don't. He wants to be a chef. Yeah. Listen, my father used to tell me all the time, be a dentist, be a dentist. He was a be a dentist. I said, what do I have? Being a butcher. What am I gonna tell my kids the same thing? Don't be a butcher. You know? Yeah, but I think if, you, if your dad said to do it, you wouldn't have wanted to. Maybe. It's because he said, don't do it. That's why you're doing exactly. it. Exactly. That's why. I wanted to hang out with family. That's cool. cool. Thank you guys so much. I'm gonna bring you short rib when it's done, and you guys gotta try it. Of course, right. no problem. Listen, we love to eat. I mean, I'm not scared. Heavy. Growing up in Oklahoma, my parents, they would drag me to farmer's markets. I do recall like having good produce. And after living in San Francisco for a long time, I was very spoiled there. Yeah. Wait, there's amazing produce in New York. This is the best gochugaru. I love this stuff. It's so incredible. I'm gonna add some gochugaru in the short ribs. Well, Lois has the best carrots. They're also sometimes the tiniest carrots you'll ever see. They're very cute, but they are so flavorful. It makes a beautiful braise. Oh, no. Rejected. <laughs> hey, what's up, man? So today we're making braised short ribs. I learned this dish a long time ago from my chef Paolo. This is actually inspired by his dish called Toco Genovese, which is just a really classic meat sauce. I like to start by marinating first. You can marinate it for as little or as long as you'd like, but if you can do it a day in advance, it's really nice. So I'm gonna start with two pounds of short ribs. So the marinade is very simple. It's just equal parts red and white wine. I like to like do a little bit of both. I think it gives it a lightness. From there, I like to marinate the vegetables on the wine too. Because you're cooking with really intensely hot heat, these vegetables will not only lend their flavor to the wine and the meat, but also because they're soaked in wine, they'll be a lot more forgiving when you're cooking at a high temperature, they won't burn. They'll almost steam and kind of soften. I'll drop those right in. So I'm gonna go back here and grab some herbs that I have. If you're marinating it for a long time, I really believe less is more. One sprig of rosemary, one sprig of sage, one sprig of parsley is enough. Okay, so now I'm just gonna cut up half an onion. This is like all about like layering these levels of flavor. This is part of that, like putting this in now, if you can, it's going to help build those levels. If you have time to marinate this like I am overnight, this brine will pull out a lot more liquid from the vegetables, from the meat, and this will almost be completely submerged. We'll salt the meat after we sear it in the oven, which is kind of like backwards from how I learned to, to do most traditional braises, but this is how Paolo showed me how to do it. As this brine and cures overnight, I like to soak a couple tablespoons of dried porcini mushroom, put cold water on it, put it in the fridge next to the ribs, and put it in the fridge. Mm. 
My favorite place to eat short ribs that have been braised and stewed like this has been Chodongol in Koreatown in New York City. I've been going there for probably 10 years now, and over time it's gotten better. One of the signature dishes is the galbi jim, right? Braised short ribs cooked in like a stone pot. Yes, uh -huh. it's a form of beginning. We'll start with that and then maybe we'll cook more. Okay, okay. okay. All right, thank you. Thank, you, thank you so you, much. Thank you very much. I've for years tried to figure out how to make it like this. I don't know how they, it's amazing. This is the appetizer tofu. Oh my God. It's so good. They mill soybeans and make their own tofu every day. It's the most deliciously bland flavor. Oh, okay, here we go. Oh, this is the dish. Wow. This is the kalpi gem. This is the star of the show, in my opinion. I love this dish so much. It reminds me a lot of my mom would make stew in like a crock pot. So it's got that beef stew texture. It's got kabocha, dates, chestnuts, and rice cakes. This sweet, sticky, uh, unctuous stew, like there's a lot of time and attention and detail put into this process. Mm. It's so good. It's like sweet, spicy, salty. Oh my God. This is a signature spicy pola with a special sauce. Wow, it's very crispy. Nice. Oh, it's a big one. What's up, Shop? How are you? I'm good. It's good to see you. Hero, yeah. right? It's an honor, yeah. yeah. Bok choy, radish kimchi, spicy tofu. How's your food? You good? This is so crazy. Every time. <laughs> Always. It's so light. You can eat all this food and you're still kind of hungry. <laughs> you want to eat more. So this is the Bosam team pork belly. Oh my god. This is the spicy Kadro omelet. It has like a matcha mayonnaise on top. There are no words. No word. This place does not taste like restaurant food. It tastes like someone made it for you at their house. It's so good. This braised short rib is so ripping hot. How long does it cook? Does it cook for a long time? We cooked up beef at the first time and uh -huh. then for about the three hours. Oh wow. And then next we keep in the freezer uh -huh. oh, wow. to make the oil uh -huh. going up. And then you take it off? And then we take it off. Oh, everything. so that's why it's not too like oily. So, and no, not oily. Uh -huh. and make it more chewy. Uh -huh. oh. yeah. I'm going to be cooking the ribs in a clay pot. Very similar cooking technique and method. Well, I mean, I've, <laughs> I've kind of given up trying to make it this good. And that's the beautiful thing about food is sometimes you just have to surrender to going to a certain place for that special dish. And so I don't want to ruin it for myself and make this at home all the time. So I'm going to make them in more of an Italian classic Genovese style raise in like a Korean stove pot. I'm scared to eat more. <laughs> all right. Ribs have been marinating overnight. We're going to pull them out and start to build the braise. So the first thing that I want to do is just to fish out all of the vegetables. As it cooks, because of the high heat, a lot of this is going to break down. You don't have to be too meticulous about this. This is a very rustic dish. It's going to kind of like all become one thing. The meat, I'm going to take out. So the porcini liquid here that we've uh, soaked the porcinis in, I like to just kind of pour that into my braising liquid. It's like mushroom cold brew. So we're not using any stock. We're really just using the liquid that's in the vegetables that have been pulled out or the meat that's been pulled out from the curing process. In the end, all this is just gonna become part of the sauce. This is a great size for if you're gonna be serving this dish over pasta of any type. You're not gonna get like a really deep, heavy caramelization. You don't really need that. You're just trying to get the essence of all of this into the fat, which will then become part of the sauce. And it's all about layering that flavor, all those la levels of flavor. If you can get a stone pot, or a, you know, clay pot, stone pot, whatever you want. This is, this is really great, this is really important. The meat, blotted on a paper towel. The beautiful thing about the dome, a little bit of the wine still on the ribs, it's fine. It gets so hot, it's going to get that restaurant steakhouse sear. So I've had this preheating for about 30 minutes and it's about 878. It doesn't need to be any higher than that, that's really hot. I want to get a really hot sear. I'm going to go closer to the heat source. I'm using gas here. And at this temperature, the meat will tell you when it needs to be flipped over. You'll start to see a nice crust forming on the top of it. I like to sear with the fat side facing up first. The fat will render down into the meat. Look at it and pull it back, you know, kind of monitor where it is. You can see that's only been about two minutes yeah. in the oven. I'll turn it around. It's cooking in that fat, but it's really the heat is all coming from the top. So we're kind of getting that burger crust on top of it. What I'll do now is um, be really careful here because there's a lot of fat. 
you want to just flip this over now. And when I flip them over, you know, monitor your heat. The temperature gauge is the overall temperature of the entire dome, but there are different heat zones. So this side of the oven is around 700. So I'm gonna start preheating my pot here to see my vegetables. So very, very carefully, you wanna take these out and let these rest. It's really important again to make sure that you're only, this is the sweet sounds of New York City. You wanna make sure that the temperature of whatever cooking vessel you're using can withstand the heat. It's around 500 degrees, so it's really hot. I'm gonna pull it out. I'm gonna go in with a couple of tablespoons of olive oil, a little bit of melted butter. Just kind of let that go there. And you wanna to start to add your sofrito here. Because this is wet, it's not gonna explode. Just mix this through the hot fat so everything's coated. A teaspoon of kosher salt here. You can add about a tablespoon of that fat here. Mix that through, and then we're gonna go right back in the dome. You wanna turn the heat to low. You just wanna let that sweat. You don't want any color on the vegetables, really. I'll add about a tablespoon of tomato paste. And I'll just fold the tomato paste through the sofrito and the fat. When the oil and the fat begins to start to go red, you're pretty much ready. That's good. So from here, I'm gonna start layering the ribs with the bone side down. The, the radiant heat and the moisture will kind of base the top of this rib. Now we're gonna add a teaspoon of kosher salt. I've got some tomato puree. Pour that right on top of the ribs. I like to stir to make sure everything's just really well incorporated. Go right on top. And last but not least, we're gonna sprinkle a little bit of a tablespoon of pine nuts. When I decided it might be really nice to throw some of this gochugaru into the braise. Paolo would probably not approve of this, but I just love this chili powder so much. And it's gonna kind of like remind me of that braise at Chodongol, how it was like nice and red, a little bit of spicy. But from here, we're gonna put the lid on. It's very hard to exercise patience. Do not take the lid off. Trust me. Chef Paolo, you would always cook in terracotta. What happens is that the braise cooks and steams and then the steam falls back into the braise and keeps it really, really tender and moist. Floor temp over here is already at 550. We're gonna go 30 minutes, just take it out, rotate it, and put it back in for 30 more minutes. Try not to peek. All right, so you can see it's very hot. It's definitely simmering. Those are really big pieces of meat. So we really want the heat to permeate and to start to break down all that connective tissue and get tender. So 30 more minutes. And then from there, we will turn the oven off, seal it and let it rest in there and continue to cook for another hour. All that heat is trapped inside of that pot. It's just gonna continue to slowly cook. As the oven temperature climbs down, that braise is gonna continue to slowly cook and just get perfect. All right, it's been an hour. The braise is finally done. Two hours total cooking time. Okay. Moment of truth. Look at that. All of that fat has kind of risen to the top and created kind of a seal and helped retain all the heat. So it all slowly cooked. This became like nice and thick. It's nice, I love this connective tissue here. This is what was wrapped around the bone. It's so nice, it's so crunchy, it gives a nice texture. So you can see how easily that just cuts apart. It's beautiful. It's jiggly, it's soft, all the connective tissue is broken down, but it holds together perfectly. Kind of reminds me of competition style barbecue pork ribs. Competition barbecue pork ribs wouldn't pull away from the bone, but the meat would be so tender, but also have a little bit of snap to it. So I just so happen to have some leftover pasta from last night. This is Busiate from our friends at Bottega Sicily. Turn the oven back on really quickly and I'm just gonna rock a really quick pasta. I'm gonna go with a little bit of olive oil. A spoonful of this meat braise. Scoop from the bottom. I make this braise for the sauce, the braising liquid. When we get it chodongol, they actually remove the fat cap, so it's nice and lean. In this instance, if you're cooking with pasta, you want that fat to emulsify and create a creamy, viscous sauce. A little handful of pasta, and I'm just gonna fold this pasta into this short rib sauce. And from this point, there's no like further cooking. We're just like looking to marry everything together. You just wanna cook this until that butter melts. And if you know it gets too tight, just take a little bit more of your sauce. Dressing a pasta is kind of like dressing a salad. You want just enough to where the last bite is dressed, but it's not too saucy. Just finish a little bit of grated Parmesan Reggio. Oh 
It's so good. I love the color that Gochugaru gave this. That little kick of heat, so good. Everyone should make this. Oh my God. Someone else has to drive. <laughs> it's really good.